Hello everyone, my name is Rotoro, but you can just call me Mr. Unemployable. We have reached the end of the 2015-2016 season in the Indonesian Premier League, second tier of Indonesia. Persita has secured their place in the Premier Division for the 2016-2017 season with a solid 5th place finish. Safety from relegation confirmed with 3 matches to go. 31 is pretty darn solid. As you can see, uh, nothing that happens in this final match will change that. Even if we lose, PSBL Langsa can't catch us. Even if we win, we won't catch Persiap, who are the team right above us. So it really means absolutely nothing. Just playing for pride. And to see if we can put another win on the board before the season is out. Now, you can already see I've started planning for next season. Three free signings are on the way. Ivan Tarmizi, Bagas Widjadmoko, and Trisumantri coming in from various places around the league. A left back, because we could always use depth there. He's a good depth left back signing, I figure. Nothing that's going to, you know, completely blow us out of the water. But depth is always something that I'm always looking for in these lower leagues. Because you can never, never say no to someone who is a solid, off the bench, put him in, wear the game out kind of guy. In the middle of the park, I really want to go back to the 4-4-2 narrow diamond. And having a nice depth option at the D-mid hole, very good to have. Little bit concerned about his fitness. More than a little bit concerned about his fitness. But he should be alright where it counts. So we're going to have a go with him as depth. And again, he's on a nice cheap deal, so he shouldn't be a problem for us to uh, hang on to. And Teresa Vantri, depth at the fullback position on the other side. Again, that's a pretty darn good player. He's joining us for sure, and I do like what he brings to the table. Much more fit than his uh, opposing number on the other side in the free transfer market. A little bit concerned about his technical stats being not up to snuff. But he's there as depth, so uh, we'll go from there. I am still looking for other options in the free transfer market. Looking at the scouting options, I am going all over the country, and indeed the region, looking for... Oh, as we got to the uh, end of our list here. Let's get these guys on scouting, shall we? Uh, looking for options at the end of contract free transfer situations. You can see we've got quite a few options to look at here. Some of them have made it to my shortlist. Uh, if we go over to the shortlist right now, we've got options up and down the park. Uh, midfielders, fullbacks, center backs, attacking mids, strikers. Like, we've got options all over the place. So it will be an interesting offseason to see who gets re signed, who doesn't, who we can pull in, who will be taken away from us. All I'm looking for here is really some solid options to patch up various holes in the squad. Some of those holes are on defense. As you can see, our center of defense is just in shambles. We have a 39 year old as our best option at 2.5. He had a decent season, can't say no to that. And then we got two stars, two stars, 1.5, two star. Like it's just the center of defense is a weakness, and I don't like that. Those of you who know my my uh, series from before are no doubt familiar with my four pillars policy. Your defense should be built on four solid pillars, four totally competent central defenders. You can rotate in through injuries, fixture congestion, what have you. Not having that is just killing me here. So that will be a major task in this offseason is to restore the four pillar strategy in the center of defense. Other thing to look at will be how we can try and convert on some of these clear cut chances. As we've gone down the stretch here, yes, we have been winning quite nicely. Lost a couple of matches there, didn't exactly like that, but we have been winning where it matters. Getting the points we need to stay safe. But we're giving up way, way too many clear-cut chances. Uh, sorry, not giving up. Not converting on our clear-cut chances. And I don't like it. I don't like it. A lot of these draws that you're seeing are the result of clear-cut chances gone begging. These losses, the result of clear-cut chances gone begging. I mean, for goodness sakes, when Bangan Pramana is 8.2 and we can't win the game, something is going wrong. And hint, it's the strikers. So there's that. Really, really hoping. With Pramana having a great season, go back to the squad list here, you can see 6.98. Yes, please. Great season for him. Kerry Udiono, 7.09 on the right side of the pitch. Idris Afandi, 7.33. 16 starts, or 16 appearances, all starts. Nine goals. We will be leaning on him much more heavily in the seasons to come. Although, uh, Andre Abubakar, although he's 27, actually, because he's 27, he's probably going to be expendable. We have tied him up for another season. We'll see if we can't ship him off, maybe get something for him as this next season comes around. Aldi Yalachia is uh, certainly an option as we develop him into a poacher. He's got him on advanced forward training. 
Uh, he's had one goal and five sub appearances, so he's sort of got that super sub vibe to him. He's on a great run of form right now. 21, room to grow. Hoping we can do something with him. Though, let's be honest here, the... When it comes to development, there's only one place to look, and that's to the new gens! Yes, the new gens have arrived, and guess what? I signed each and every one of them. <laughs> I signed each and every new gen that was offered, because why not? The U21 cabinet is completely bare. Absolutely empty. So why not sign the entire lot of them? Uh, Henry Rivaldi was already here from the previous regime, so he stays there. He still hasn't developed that much. So we'll see if he's worth keeping around. Probably not. We're going to drop him at the end of the season. Uh, Fatshu Rokman was on loan. He will be gone at the end of this loan, so we have our new left back coming in to provide that depth. The only other... Uh, oh, there he is. There's our other new gen. Is Gedi Oharela. Now, this kid... Oh my goodness. Comes out of the gate 1.5 potential through the roof. That is a gem of a new gen at the second division level. Look at those mental stats. Unbelievable. Now, his off the ball and positioning are pretty horrible. That will need to be worked on. But he's got average stuff where it matters, and he's got acceleration to boot. Fantastic stats to have for an attacking mid. I am training him on the attacking on the wing, trying to make him an in, either in a, a wide playmaker, or advanced playmaker as it is, or an inside forward. We're going with advanced playmaker for the time being. I think he can do well here. We'll highlight the key attributes here. He's already got it where it matters on the mental side, which is great. If we can work on these technical abilities, are definitely lacking. We need him to work on those. He could be a fantastic advanced playmaker for us on that left-hand side. Perhaps even switching us over to a 4-3-3 with a wide attacking left, wide attacking right. You never know. But he is 15. He's got a ways to go yet, but a great, great new gen coming in for the U21s. Two others to look at here. Uh, Edi Superahan, he's uh, almost at a gold star. He's five full silver. 3.5 potential confirmed, possibly 4.5. That would be nice. Another central midfielder. He is what we need, though, in the central midfielder. He's just a straight-up, ball-winning, no-nonsense midfielder. Very fit, too. Love it when kids come out of the academy with 16 fitness. Yes, please. Other one to look at here is a Dedi Ramadani. Another midfielder. Uh, he's not really ready for prime time. He's getting 2.5 silver, potential 3, maybe 4. Again, he's not going to, you know, knock anybody's socks off, but as far as depth goes, he could become a good depth uh, pickup for us down the road. So we'll see if we can develop him into perhaps a second or third tier central midfielder. But as it stands, let's be honest here, the gem of this new gen crop is Gede Ojarela. That is just stellar. And in his one appearance in the, uh, in the intra squad trial match, he got himself a goal and an assist. So he, he, he's, he's going to be good. He's going to be pretty darn good for us. One other thing to note here, uh, actually two other things I should say. First, with the league, the award voting time has come. And in the award voting, Premier Player of the Year, one of our guys, Idris Afandi, is indeed in the shortlist. 7.339 goals for us is to player of the match. Yes, please. Uh, he will likely lose out to uh, Wawan Tsukayo, who I voted for, as you can see. 15 goals and 21 appearances. That'll do it. I mean, voting for the top goal scorer is a bit of a cop-out, but that's just a fantastic rate of return. Great job for him. And for the Young Player of the Year, I voted for Arpen Vitor Masvidal uh, for reasons that should be obvious. 7.46, I mean, what more can you ask for? Madion Putra sitting in second in their group. They'll be heading on to the second phase if all goes well. And indeed, it probably will be because they cannot be caught by PSBS, so there you go. Final thing. 5-1 victory over PSBL Langsa. Our final home match of the season was a fan day. What a time to get a 5-1 win. Fan day. A bumper crowd of 3,400 showed up. Our average is about 21, 2,200 for the season. So that's a fantastic turnout. And to reward them with five goals, one as early as the 15th minute is just sublime. Clean sheet was ruined shortly after Abu Bakar got his second, but doesn't, actually, after Afandi got his second as well. Doesn't matter, though. 5-1. Everyone goes home happy. We're all very happy. Got a Jahari some minutes, and he got an assist to reward me, so very good, very good. That's what you call a good fan day. Let's see if we can have another good day as we have our final match of the season, an away match. We're going to go with what has become my A team. In fact, I've, I've quick selected this as a team selection, so I can just go straight over to a select team and tell it to go A-team. And this is, there it is, quick pick, A-team. 
You're looking at it right here. Prabadi, Miziar, Zaputan, Putra, Bero Pare, Yudiono, Permana, Fernando, Muharam, Afandi, and Abu Bakar. That's our top 11 right now. And that's with Bermana, Permana playing out of his favorite position, playing as a deep lying playmaker. At some point, we gotta try and retrain him, but for now, he's doing exactly what we want him to do, and we're very, very happy for that. So let's get to today's match, shall we? Brazil looks like the favorites to win. You darn right. We're in form. We are finally scoring goals. We are still not converting all of our clear cut chances, which is a problem. My assistant uh, manager still seems to think that uh, marking everyone is our best course of action. All right, then. All right, guys. Carry on straight where we finished off. Let's finish off. Hey, another 5 1 would be great. Drive up that goal differential a little bit. Three more points. Counter-tagging has helped. Rosita in their lovely pinkish-purple kits. Percy up in their red. That's the biggest thing we'll have to work on next season, is uh, figuring out what will get us to convert those click-out chances. As I mentioned, switching to a counter-tagging formation has helped. Allows us to use that speed, allows us to just send balls over the top and have Abubakar and Afandi just run onto them. See if that actually comes true in this match. Puts with a good header. Alrighty, here comes that counter. Afandi looks long. There's Abu Bakar. Goes back to Pramana. What will he do from here? Goes out wide to Yudiono. Yudiono. Abu Bakar can't get there ahead of Abdurrahman. Miraram. Back to the fullback. Vero Pere to Pramana to Afandi. Saved by Wiamoko. Hey, look at that. Another click-up chance goes begging. It's only our second shot of the game. And so it begins. Or, let's be honest here, as so, is, as so it continues. The problem with playing counter-attack is you have to watch the other team attack you. Which is never a, a pleasant thing. You're like, oh great, here we go. It's working out, though. Fondi has done well since we moved over to the deep lying role, letting Abu Bakar play up top. Fernando, Permana, Permana, Fondi, Abu Bakar. Oh, it's in! What a strike! Abu Bakar off the bar and in. Wow, you could not pick the top corner. Any closer than that. Look at this strike. Bard. Oh. Perfectly aimed and weighted a fraction of an inch. And that's off the bar and out. Great strike by Andre Abubakar. And it's 1 0 for Persita. Meanwhile, Prabadi handles the ball outside the box, gets himself a yellow. One nil as we head towards halftime. A very good sign as we prepare for the next season. Ending on a high note. A fundy! That's more like it. Now, he has a history of not finishing those chances, so it is very nice to see him capping off this campaign with his 10th of the season. Lovely little ball from Yudiono. Shine those shoes. A fundy to Yudiono. Takes a touch. Splits the D nicely. Afandi checks to the shoulder of the last defender. Pots the ball in the back of the net. Thank you very much to Neil Brasita going into the break. Afandi has been sensational. Yudiono hasn't been bad either. Our fullback, Bero Pare, also having a great game for him. And of course, Abu Bakar lights out up top. Very nice indeed. Keep it going, everybody. Second half starts. We're hoping for the same exact performance. Two more goals. Let's go for 4-0 before the full time. Uh, I mean, unlikely, but it would be nice. And... Oh. Thought for sure we'd be getting the card there, but hey, they get it. Excellent. I'll take it. Mizyar off the throw-in. Yudiono. Fondi. 
Hermana. Over the top, and misses the header. Abu Bakar again fluffs the clear cut chance. All he had to do was round the defender. He's one on one with the keeper, but nope, he posts up, hits the defender. Still not the best with the whole soccer intellect thing is Abu Bakar. So let's give Alachia another uh, kick up top here. Jahari did good in his uh, appearance. Let's, uh. Mm, no, I take that back. Our midfield is gassed. We are playing high tempo now. So let's flip this around. Up to and Lestaluhu. Who's got the better tackling? Neither. All right, we'll convert you both to just straight up central midfielders with nothing special about it. It's straight up good old fashioned central midfield. Straight up good old fashioned central midfield. All right. Triple sub. Triple sub. Hey, we got a free kick about that. I don't know how we earned that free kick, but I'll take it. Well, I don't think I'm gonna get my uh don't think I'm gonna get my uh my wish of a four nil win. But hey, two nil is just fine, especially away from home. Nice little poke there from Afandi. Can he spring Abu Bakar? He will try, but no, it's Alachia. Sorry, I forgot I made that sub already. Ooh, but here's a good counter by Percy. Jeff. Yana, one on one, wide of the net. We are spared the blushes. Great job, otherwise, from the defense of this match. And it's a fine end to the season. 2 0 for Persita. Very nicely done. All the damage done in the first half. And then just riding out the victory. So Persita finishes the Indonesian Premier Division in fifth place. They will not move on to the first phase, sadly. But that is a very good season. All the board wanted was for us to not be outclassed. I'd say a uh, a fifth place finish is definitely not being outclassed. Meanwhile, relegations happening across the Premier Division. That's a shame. Lots of firings. Well, I'm not so worried about that. Oh, one more defenders for next season. Solid display. One aerial challenges. Problem is, if you can't jump, I don't want them. A defender that doesn't have, you know, the ability to jump is not exactly somebody that I want to have on my team. Adianto, however, that's looking like it could be a nice pickup. Doesn't get stuck in. Well, he won't be a ball winner then. Really? Some doubts? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Still some work to do here in the free transfer market. Hey, 151000 for fifth place. That does not get us into profitable, profitable territory, but that's okay. We'll get there. What's more important is that next time on Mr. Unemployable, I will have a team to come back to. Persita will be preparing for the start of the 2016-2017 season in the Indonesian Premier Division. Hopefully, we can challenge for that top two position and move on to the second phase. That will be next time on Mr. Unemployable 2, The Grand Nation Adventure. My name is Arturo. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you like what you've seen, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, favorite. Tell all your friends about these videos on YouTube. And don't forget, if you like what you've seen, join us live. All these episodes are recorded live in Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Arturo. Where uh, apparently people were predicting they would be in before the collapse. Well, that collapse didn't happen. We got our 2-0 win. My name is Arturo, but you can just call me Mr. Unemployable. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.